you got a couple more people coming. That you I, is, I Daria Novak from the second are coming, and that's maybe it. So when I say a couple, maybe you just one. All here, all right. Hopefully, I'm not taking up all your heat. But I didn't even bring a coat with me. All right. Anyway, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, who I am and, uh, and why I'm running for United States Senate. I mean, first of all, I've never, uh, you know, sought elected office. And, I've obviously never held elected office. I mean, people don't even know why I'd want to run. It's a lot of, uh, you know, hassle to run. It's a lot of, you know, it's, it's very difficult. I mean, I drove out here, what, two and a half hours. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, run for office. And, you know, for me, of course, it's going to, it amounts to a significant pay cut. So, you know, the real reason that's motivating me to, to want to do this is for years, you know, I'm running my business trying to figure out how to protect myself from all the stupid things that Washington is doing and, and my clients. I'm investing uh, to try to protect my wealth from policies that are coming out of Washington, coming out of Congress, coming out of the Federal Reserve that I know are going to be destructive to our economy, that are going to devastate investment returns, that are going to destroy the value of our money. And, and so that's been foremost in my mind, and that's formulated my investment strategy now for about a decade. And at this point, the mistakes are now so large. I think the consequences for our nation are so enormous that I can't just worry about the investment consequences. I really have to think about the consequences for our country, uh, you know, for our, ourselves, for our children, for our way of life. And so rather than simply figuring out how to protect myself from what Washington is doing, I'd rather go to Washington and stop them from doing it in the first place. You know, I know what needs to be done. And unfortunately, that's not happening. I mean, the politicians are doing the exact opposite of what needs to be done. They're trying to tell us that the economy is recovering. It's not recovering at all. It's actually getting worse. Everything the government done has made it worse. Sure, we've got the GDP numbers are going up a little bit now, and we're spending a little bit more money. But the problems aren't getting solved. The problems are, are worse. All we're looking at is the government blowing a little bit of air back into the bubble. But it's not going to stay there. There's already a hole that's too big in that bubble. Whatever air they come push in is going, to, is going to flow out. See, the problem is we're just doing all the things wrong that we did to inflate the bubble. We, we can't spend any more money. We're broke because we spent too much money. And here you have Congress trying to enact policies to get people who are basically broke to go out and spend more money. We can't do that. Individuals can't do that. The government can't do that. The only solution to our problems involves saving money, involves producing things, making stuff, exporting. We can't do any of that with the government stimulating consumption and stimulating spending. You know, that's how we got into this mess. You know, in 2002, 2001, after the NASDAQ bubble burst, we made the same mistakes. George Bush came into office and he inherited the bursting NASDAQ bubble from 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 uh, Clinton. What did he do? Did he let the free markets function and try to restore balance to the economy? After all, we did a lot of really stupid things in the late 1990s. I mean, people invested a lot of money in crazy stocks, internet companies that were losing money. These companies hired people, they rented office space. All that had to be cleaned out. I mean, once the bubble burst and we realized how stupid we were, we had to reallocate resources. There was gonna be a major recession but the government didn't let it happen. That recession would have been very cleansing and we would have emerged from it with a much sounder economy. Instead, they stimulated. We ran up the deficits under Bush and Alan Greenspan slashed interest rates down to 1% to convince Americans to spend money. And we inflated the housing bubble and we all, you know, we all acted like we were drunk. You know, Wall Street went out and securitized all these mortgages because they had cheap money from the Fed to do it. They had guarantees from Freddie and Fannie. Americans took out teaser rates and interest-only mortgages and all kinds of credit because the Fed made it available. And we went on a spending spree. We spent trillions of dollars that we didn't have. We bought stuff we couldn't afford. And, and, now, and then we were broke. And the bubble finally bursts. And what are they doing? Same thing. They want to stimulate it again. They want to get us back out spending. You know, when when George Bush gave his assessment of the problem, right, he said that Wall Street was drunk. Yeah, he was right, right? Wall Street was drunk. The whole country was drunk. It wasn't just Wall Street. But the question was why? Why were they drunk? It was the, it was the Federal Reserve that liquored everybody up. 
They poured the alcohol, and sure, the people drank it, but people do very stupid things when they're drunk. And we're doing the same thing again. We're trying to pour more alcohol because we're sobering up and we're realizing how much trouble we're in. What we did, and the government wants us to repeat that. And the bigger problem is the size of this stimulus is now so enormous that we could overdose on it and the, the economy can completely collapse. The government has grown like a cancer. I mean, the, the federal government right now is spending almost, in the, mo in the most recent budget, four trillion dollars in one year four trillion dollars that's twice more than twice what we spent 10 years ago and you know that wasn't so long ago the year 2000 i remember thinking that the government was really big in the year 2000 i wanted to shrink it then now it's doubled in size how can we possibly afford that well we can't i mean that's why the economy is collapsing right now because the, all the way the government is crushing it we can't afford it because that, those, that money, that $4 trillion, has to come out of the private sector. You know, if you want to know why businesses can't get loans, it's because the government is spending all the borrowed money. I mean, I mean all the saved money. There's nothing left. The budget deficit right now is $1.5 trillion. That, about 15 years ago, that was the entire federal budget. Now it's just the deficit. And that's just one year. It's going to keep on growing up. In fact, in the month of February, we put a record, all-time record high. The federal government ran a budget deficit in the month of February of $220 billion. That's just one month. Where's this money coming from? What are the consequences of the government borrowing and spending all this money? Because all that money has to come from the private sector. That's money that businesses don't have to survive. They don't have to expand, to hire people. That's, that's money that entrepreneurs can't get to start new businesses. The whole country is suffocated because government is bleeding it dry. We need to do something about it. You know, I found out even recently, just symptomatic of what's going on, I looked at how much money we're paying our government employees. Government employees now are earning twice, twice what private sector employees earn on average. I mean, that's crazy. Twice what we earn. They work for us. How can they possibly earn twice what we do? Right? There was a time when public service actually meant you got less. Right? You actually did public service and you didn't get as much money as the people who were you know, in the private sector. Now, you're getting twice as much in the public sector. That has to stop. We, have to, we, we need to reduce the, what we're paying people. We need to reduce the number of people on the federal payroll. We can't afford to have all these federal workers. We also have to cut government departments, cut agencies, abolish a number of them, because the country is broke. We can't afford all this government. We couldn't afford it before it grew. You know, they think, the politicians think that the way to grow the economy is to grow the government. Uh-uh. The way to grow the economy is to shrink the government. And, and if we shrink the government enough, then we can cut taxes. Then we can repeal a lot of these rules and regulations that are making us uncompetitive, that are driving up the cost of production, that are punishing entrepreneurs for expanding or for hiring people. We have to do all that stuff. And if we don't do it soon... We're going to have a much bigger collapse. You know, we just spoke a minute ago about the fact that Social Security is now out of money. I mean, it's been bankrupt on an actuarially basis for a long time. And Social Security has an unfunded liability of over $10 trillion. But up until this year, they collected enough in taxes to make the payments. Not anymore. They are right now in Social Security at the exact same point where Bernie Madoff had to turn himself in. Right? They are out of money. And that is a major crisis because now Social Security needs to be bailed out. The government has to borrow money to make those payments. So this is a huge crisis coming. And the bigger crisis that's going to hit in the next year or two is going to be a currency crisis. Because of all the money that we've printed and all the money that we've borrowed, the people around the world who have been lending us money, the Chinese, the Japanese, the Saudi Arabia, they're going to stop. They're not going to lend us any more money because we can't even pay back the money we've already borrowed. Why should they loan us trillions more? So that's all going to stop. And then the only thing we're going to have is Ben Bernanke and his printing press to try to finance these trillion dollar deficits. And that's going to destroy the dollar. And that is a real crisis. That's not just a financial crisis. That's a currency crisis. And that's going to hit every single American right where it hurts. It's going to destroy the value of their savings. It's going to destroy the value of their paychecks. And it's going to send millions more Americans to the unemployment lines. But even those that still have jobs are going to have a hard time because their paychecks aren't going to be